To open up Katia, you should have a SolidWorks version on your desktop. So at the school, you'll be able to log in and just find SolidWorks 2 and double click on this. SolidWorks is the Dassault Systems. They have Katia, 3D Experience, and SolidWorks. Uh, they're a company from France, and uh, the SolidWorks in Katia are highly used in aircraft and automotive and many other things. When this SolidWorks comes up, you can make a drawing or an assembly, or in this case, we're going to make a simple part. So I click on this, and it opens up a part. And what I want to do is create a sketch on this plane here, which would be the top plane. So I select on the top plane, and I'm going to access, oh, where did Sketcher go? This feature right here, I'm going to go into Sketcher. And we're going to pick this icon right here to get into the sketch. And it's going to take that top plane and rotate it flat. All right. So from your first introduction, we learned how to move the part by using the control button and then the middle button. And then you move the part ever so slightly. And it puts the pan arrow up. <clears throat> I'm just going to go ahead and draw out a rectangle. doesn't matter what size. You can do whatever size you want. I'm using the XY coordinates to just kind of see about what size it is right now. And I just click a location and it creates a rectangle. <clears throat> the reason why the rectangle is blue is because it's, uh, I just clicked and it thinks I want to do another rectangle. So as long as that box up here is gray, it wants to keep building rectangles. I'll just turn it off. <clears throat> so these are unconstrained profiles. If I select this line here, that line would represent my datum A for this example. Uh, kind of. Anyways, when you select a line, we'll just make this a fixed element. So that line gets an anchor symbol on it, telling you that it's fixed is the equivalent of setting a datum edge meaning that this line is going to be locked up it can't move anywhere and uh, when I get my cursor off the part you'll see that the line changed from blue to black meaning it's anchored or a fixed element or it's a datum element it's not going to move so I could grab this top line and move it up and down I could grab this line and this line and move it back and forth side to side because they're not constrained, but this black line is constrained to be in that location and not move again. Again, how I did that is I simply selected the line, and on the left side, these pop-up windows will automatically appear, and you just select Fix. And I've just established two datum lines. This light blue line means it's active. The dark blue lines means it's unconstrained. The black line means it's constrained. <clears throat> I'll click off the part just so you can see that I've got a part with two anchors on it and let me zoom up a little closer here just to get it bigger to the screen hopefully that will come up better on your screen where you can see that these are black and let's go ahead and put on a constraint so with smart constraint active you can simply grab a line Where am I? Looks like smart. With that gray box on. Oh, if you leave it there too, it will watch or show you how this works. It's selecting a line and then changing a value. So I'm just simply going to grab a line like it says. Push this dimension out here. And I'm going to first place the dimension or constraint. So I'd like to put that right in the middle of the screen because that's what ANSI ASME would want you to do. I'm going to click right about here in the middle. I'm going to click and let go. And it will come up with this window to automatically modify it. I'm going to make it 6 inches. Keep it simple for me. You'll notice that this line 
and this line, the two vertical lines, became black because this is now constrained. If I were to double click this and change it to 8, which line would move, the left one or the right one? If you said the right one, you are correct because the left one had that anchor on it, meaning it's fixed and it won't move. So if I add another constraint over here and I make that 4 inches, the top line moves because this line here was fixed. This part is now fully constrained. And uh, down here, I believe this is what it's telling me right here on the bottom left. This is fully constrained. Once a part is fully constrained, you're done and you can move on to the next thing or you can add new features. So that's going to be my demo on how to fully constrain a rectangle. By the way, these are not minus signs. These are horizontal vertical signs, letting us know that those lines are horizontal vertical. Since they're horizontal and vertical, I don't need to dimension this corner because this corner is linked to this 4-inch dimension here. And this dimension here is linking this corner and this corner. Therefore, we have a fully constrained, fully constrained profile. All right, that concludes this demo. We'll go on and we're going to add the holes and slots next.